Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Tuesday, just sort of after lunchtime here in Australia, market cap still kind of sitting around that two trillion dollar mark, holding on to it just by you know, sort of uh, I think it's two hundred million dollars or something like that. Uh, no, because that's yeah, trillion billions. Yep, that's it. I think that's about two hundred million dollars, and then we go, excuse me, under that market cap. Right, Bitcoin dominance has risen, getting back up to nearly 40%. Definitely volume again, uh, there again, but look, we see this. The volume comes in, pushes it up a little bit, and then it all turns around. Now, it's not to say the bottom's not in. I'm just not sold yet. The good thing is, look, Bitcoin has bounced pretty nicely. It got down into the $39,000 range. It didn't last long and bounced up to $42,000. So that's nice. But will it hold? And ETH gas prices are starting to surge. All right, considering the market is down ever so slightly, almost a percent, what has fared well? There we go. Near protocol, 22% bounce. Rose, 15%. Adam, 9%. Uh, IOTA nearly 6%, Osmosis, so look, we've got some gains there and they're nice and Chainlink really is doing well and look, even Maddox put in a little bit of a bounce there, but will it last? That is the question. All right, what hasn't fared well considering the market's down? All right, Olympus Dow still not doing too well, going down a little bit. Arweave, Convex Finance going down. DeFi, Jewel Kingdom, Spell Token, Loop Ring, Safe Moon, good Lord, Gala. Now, I will let everyone know I sold out of my Gala position. Uh, I don't like to sell things for a loss, but I was watching Invest Answers and he spoke about the tokenomics and he said that they were highly inflationary and uh, that was the reason he didn't get in, so... Yeah, that was me. I only had a small position in there. It's not to say I still won't change my mind, but considering it's going down and we may be, you know, going down further, it just wasn't something that I thought was worth holding. And what I did was converted uh, what I had into UST, so Terra Luna uh, dollar, uh, and I'm now staking that to get some rewards. Uh, you know, sometimes you got to cut things, and that just has really been one of my biggest... Uh, sort of losers, but it was a very short time and I do feel bad, but just a lot of the gaming tokens uh, that I've looked into uh, and I've liked the teams and everything, but their tokenomics, again, they're just highly inflationary and things like that. So I've had to reconsider my thoughts about that. I think with the gaming tokens, you know, you got to get in early. You don't want to sort of buy in late. Now, that's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong and Gala could turn around and do something amazing, but for me, that is one of the co coins that I sold off uh, when I had to fix up, uh, not fix up, rebalance my portfolio. So I still hope Gala do well. I still like the team and what they're about, but the tokenomics uh, not being great was something that uh, definitely concerned me. But look, none of the losses are really too bad, except for Olympus Dow. That one's uh, really getting hurt, and are we 10%? It's not great. But look, again, it's a pretty sideways market. So let's go have a look. Here's Bitcoin. Now, again, it did get a really nice bounce. Like I said, it wicked all the way down basically to $39,500 and has rebounded quite nicely. And now it's at $42,000. But what I would be looking for is that we don't make it up to about, you know, maybe sort of forty-three, forty-four thousand. dollars Or look, what about we could make it up to because it still could do it in today. Yeah, $44,000. And we don't just then get rejected and start to come back down. Now we are getting to the pointy end of this. So that's something that we need to remember. So the further down we go, the more hopeful I would be that we're going to get a bounce. But that's only if we're still in a bull market. If we are in a bear market, then this absolutely could have a bounce. But eventually it'll roll over and go down. And again, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know exactly where we are. I'm just taking educated, basically, guesses. And I don't think we're in a bear market. I think we're just in a corrective phase. But we need to wait and see what happens, you know, particularly with the Fed uh, and the other markets and things like that. Because if they continue to go down, Bitcoin will go down. All right, we all know what I'm thinking about Bitcoin. And so far, this seems to be playing out not too bad. I mean, I put this in quite some time ago. And look at this, it's playing out pretty nicely at the moment so again i wouldn't be surprised if we don't get up to around about sort of 47 46 ish thousand dollars and then maybe still come back down for that one big final capitulation sort of low but never financial advice 
and there's no guarantees in life that this is going to play out. It's just looking somewhat similar at the moment, which is nice for me. I can say, look, this is how I thought it might play out, and it is, but I can guarantee you it's, un- well, I can't guarantee you, but it's unlikely I'm going to be exactly right, but I do get the feeling I'm at least half right. You know, We started here, I'm, always, I'm pretty much halfway down to where I thought we might go, so half right. All right, moving on. This is the one I'm interested in um, mostly, though, is the total market cap. I'm thinking it's giving a better indication of where we might be. Again, we've been sort of bouncing around in this range for a long time. We had a fake out to the low side. We had a fake out to the upside, and now here we are. I am still waiting to see, again, this market cap come down to about $1.75-ish trillion. That's not to say that I don't think it'd go lower. And if I try and compare these two charts, the Bitcoin and uh, this chart, that really does make me think that we're going to come down to around about sort of here, the 37 ish thousand dollar mark, thereabouts. And then I would hope that we find a bounce from there, but we may, we may not. Because again, have a look at this. This is the Bitcoin chart, the two big bubbles. Well, not the two big bubbles, the two big tops. One big top, two big top, and then the big dip in the middle. Big dip in the middle. So for me, I just think it's definitely possible that we might come down to, again, the one point kind of three-ish trillion dollar mark, somewhere down around about there, and then that would bring Bitcoin again down into kind of this $33,500 range, uh, cover that CME gap, and then really, again, from there, I would be absolutely hoping that that would be the bottom if the bottom's not already in or found sooner. And unfortunately, the scary thing is if that's not the bottom, then whew, who knows how much lower we're going to go. All right. Associated Press to launch NFT marketplace on Polygon. The AP is launching its own photo NFT marketplace, which will feature Pulitzer Prize winning photos. And this is going to happen on Polygon. Hence why I'm such a Polygon bull. I bought a little bit of Polygon today in my uh, sort of buys. uh, And it's more sort of, again, it was just a tiny amount. I like Polygon. I like everything about them. So I bought a tiny little bit. It really wasn't very much at all. And I didn't want to put too much into it because Polygon is at all-time highs. Uh, Sorry, was at all-time highs not too long ago, but it's already at a somewhat reasonable discount. It got up to nearly, you know, $3. And now, let's have a look. I think it's low $2 mark. Where are we? Where's Matic, 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 Matic? Yeah, $2, there you go. So it's, it's down a fair bit already. And look, if it continues to go down every now and then, I'll chuck a few more dollars at it as well. But that is something that I bought today. But again, a very small amount. I'm really not focusing on too much at all. Like I said, mainly Bitcoin and Ethereum, and I'm not even putting that much into them at the moment. But this is something I want everyone to be mindful of. Kim Kardashian, Floyd Mayweather, Paul Pierce are being sued over Ethereum Max promotion. You know, hopefully if you're watching my channel, you're a little bit more seasoned. And if you're not, be careful of following influencers. Most of these people have absolutely no clue about crypto. We are still so, so early. They just simply get paid money to pump these coins. And they they know the little bit about uh, crypto that, oh yeah, it sounds like it's super scammy, but sometimes it goes up by a whole lot. And they just remember the upside uh, and they get paid. And so then they go and shield these coins. I'd never really heard too much about Ethereum Max at all, but as soon as I knew it was being pumped by these people, I just knew it was a shitcoin straight away because good projects won't need to pay people to pump up their coins. They're just going to be a good project. The, the community behind them will help pump them up. So please, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to crypto, you know, beware of influencers and things pumping coins. They are most likely shite coins. You know, you want to go and make sure there's a good community behind them, i.e. not, you know, not bloody TV reality stars and sports stars. Like, it's all good when people like that get behind something, but it shouldn't be just that. There should be a really good community and it should have some good history behind it and things like that. Outside of that, you're just playing with fire. So please be careful. 
All right, this is interesting. So legacy investor Bill Miller, one of the most famed investors of our time, has allocated 50% of his portfolio into Bitcoin. Now he purchased it uh, a fair amount last year. He's been buying it since I think 2014. I think he literally bought some at $200 originally. But he purchased a fair amount when it dipped down to 30,000 not too long ago. So again, that was back when it dipped down over here. So it'll be very interesting to see how he will go if it starts to get close to uh, that price again. You know, he'll still be in a profit at around about 33,000, 33,000, 33,000, 34,000, I would say. But will he have uh, the tenacity to hold? I think he will, but it'll still be very interesting. Now, this is why. He says here, it could be very dangerous for short-term investors. Speaking about long-term hodlers though, the asset seems like the right investment tool as it has always managed to overcome uh, its price drops. So I think he will be able to hold, you know, he, he may have put a fair amount into it, but I think it also became 50% of his uh, wealth because of how well it performed. So it could become less than 50% of his wealth if it comes back down to uh, sort of 30-ish thousand dollars. But this is what you need to remember in investing in general. Number one, you gotta do your research. And then number two, you gotta be able to hold through the volatility because you just never know when some gray swan event might happen or even worse, a black swan event. And that doesn't mean you, know, you automatically sell everything and then try and buy back in because chances are you've probably already missed it and you're gonna sell at the worst time. And ladies and gentlemen, I've done that. I've sold things at uh, you know basically their kind of lows and just watched them go back up. Uh, but in saying that, a couple of, a, a few of those have only been because of panic. Most of the other times when that's happened, it's just simply because it was time to take profits. Uh, and I wish I had have done it like a week or two earlier when it was doing a lot better. Uh, but I decided to take some and then basically almost as soon as I took the profits, it started to go back up again. But I was still well in profit in those coins. So that was just rebalancing. I still, uh, even myself, I've been in this space for a while. It's very... I won't say very hard, but it is definitely hard to take profits when you just see something continuing going up because you're always scared that, oh, what happens if it does another 10x from here? But the problem is if you're already feeling like that, it's probably time to take profits. And likewise, if something's dumping, 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 and you're thinking, oh, God, I've got to sell before this goes to zero, it's probably near the bottom already if you're already thinking about that. So just something to keep in mind, but I think he will hodl and I think he's on the right uh, train. And, you know, it goes to show some of the smartest minds, they are buying Bitcoin. And look, it's not just him. Bitfarm buys the dip. They added a thousand Bitcoin to their treasury. So the company's corporate treasury now holds more than three, 4,300 Bitcoins. And so they're buying right now at around that kind of $40,000 level. This is smart money. Now, does it mean they've picked the exact bottom? Absolutely not. Well, I won't say absolutely not. Maybe they did. Maybe they absolutely fluked it and got Bitcoin at $39,578 or something like that, whatever it was. And that is uh, one hell of a scoop. But they just know that it's on a discount. And if it goes down a little bit more, they'll buy a little bit more, like most smart investors will. All right. Arbitrum Network stalled due to sequence of downtime. So again, this is why I want you to remember how early you are. Ethereum, it's the duck's nuts, you know, it's kind of the thing, the smart contract platform, it's been around for years, and even it's still not 100%, and it's probably still years off. Vitalik Buterin came out a while ago and basically said something along the lines of, he didn't expect Ethereum 2.0 to be like legitimately fully rolled out for a number of years. A number of years that's how early we still are we've got such a long way to go but it says here what is sequencer you're probably wondering so sequencer is a specially designated full node which has given limited power to control the ordering of the transactions now even though it's uh, stalled and that's all that happened stalled so it was down for a little while it hasn't fallen apart there was no hacks or anything like that Arbitrum is the number one roll-up solution in the Ethereum ecosystem in terms of total value locked. So it has over $2.62 billion in total value locked. So again, ladies and gentlemen, that's just how early we are. Basically everything but Bitcoin, it's not a finished product yet. 
they literally are still in the process of, you know, they're in betas and all sorts of things. They aren't a legit completed project. And even when they become legit and, you know, completed, they'll still need to upgrade with time. That's the that's how technology works. You're not ever going to build some technology that then just doesn't ever need to do anything and it's solid for the rest of its life. If it doesn't continue to innovate and upgrade and things like that, something else will just come along that'll be better than it. And, I mean, there's already you know layer ones that are supposedly better than ethereum but we can see they've all had some issues every single one of them because that's how early in the space you are i really do think there's another you know around about minimum five to possibly ten years of really good upside before then there'll still be upside after that but things just start to peter out those exponential gains will probably be have to be found somewhere else but again that's just an opinion uh, not financial advice Right, Disney moves towards the metaverse. I knew Disney was going to go in a direction like this. A lot of people around the world, like it's hard to get to Disneyland, you know, particularly now with the, all the things that are going on with, you know, viruses and all that kind of stuff. Imagine you just chuck on some headsets and then you're at Disney World and you can move through Disney World. That is the kind of the direction that the world is heading in. How close are we to that? Oh, I don't know. I'd say something similar. Probably still five or ten years away, I think, from really that being a more common thing. But Disney making big moves into that, and I really do think a, a virtual uh, Disney world is the absolute right way to go. You know, whether you can still go on rides and that, I'm sh actually, I'm sure you can, because they've already got games like that where you put the headset on and it's like you're in a roller coaster and things like that. So, yeah. That's where the space is going. Metaverse is going to be huge. Whether Disney come out with their own land or something, I don't know, and you can buy land. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But again, this is just showing you where this space is going. Is it there yet? No. Nah. Is it going to be there tomorrow? No. Is it going to be there in the next year or two? Probably not. Is it going to be there in the next five to ten years? I think there's a pretty good chance. Ten years is probably pushing it. I think within the next five, it will definitely be commonplace. But we'll have to wait and see. Right, last but not least. And I was speaking about putting some money into Terra before. So Terra Proposal seeks to expand the UST stablecoin to five different DeFi protocols. So the DeFi protocols they're looking at is Olympus DAO, Rari Fuse, Invictus DAO, Convex Finance and Tokemak. But look, it's not all good news and not everyone's happy about it. So the co-founder of MakerDAO, Rune Christensen, tweeted that the stablecoins UST, so Terra Luna's stablecoin, and MIM, so Magic Internet Money, were solid Ponzi's and eventually they would be worth zero. So this is something to keep in mind and be very, very careful with. So again, I've put some money into UST and taken it over to Anchor to try and earn some money but it's not a whole lot. So I think they're paying 19% or something like that on uh, UST at the moment on their platform. Will that last forever? Probably not. Could it go to zero? There's a definite chance. But there's a chance of everything going to zero, ladies and gentlemen, even Google, even Tesla, even Amazon. But it's how likely is that? Now, don't get me wrong, you know, Anchor and... Uh, Lunar and all these DeFi projects are probably a lot closer to going to zero than things like uh, Tesla and you know Amazon and that. But the chances are still there. There's no such thing as a 100% safe investment. You just got to, you know, I don't like to say take a chance, but that's really what it is. You want to take an educated chance and put some, you know, thought uh, and process into the things you've done. But it's still... Yeah, basically taking a chance. Nothing's guaranteed in life, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely nothing. But I do like 19 point something percent on my Terra UST. So again, I cleaned up some of my things, got into stable coins, and I have put some money over on uh, Anchor to see how it goes. It literally hasn't been there for too long. I haven't earned a whole lot of money, but it is earning money. Maybe in five or 10 years time, if that 20% can sort of hold, It'll turn into something more substantial. And look, again, there's only way, one way to find out, and that is take a bit of a chance. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but hopefully the bottom's in. I'm not exactly sure and not confident, but anyway, I'll see you next time.